Hi, everybody. My name is Cynthia Kane. I'm a professor and an instruction and assessment librarian here at the Emporia State University Libraries and Archives. But more important for your purposes, I am your librarian for your subject area. That means that you can contact me if you have any questions about doing research in your area, or in this particular instance, if you have any questions about how to do citations or how you're writing your research paper in your preferred or recommended citation style. I'm gonna switch over here. and go to the topic of this video tutorial, which is, what is plagiarism and how can I avoid it? Now, in this video tutorial, we're gonna be going over some examples of obvious and maybe not so obvious plagiarism or copying without giving um, a particular author or a particular work sufficient credit and some ways that you can avoid it when, you're, when you start to write research papers or create um, infographics, create websites, basically any creations of your own design. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna be focusing a little bit more upon the American Psychological Association or APA style of citing uh, works and writing papers. But the concepts that I talk about in this tutorial on avoiding plagiarism can actually be applied to any other type of citation style. So if you're ever using MLA for the Modern Language Association or the Chicago Manual of Style or other types of citation styles, the concepts are gonna be exactly the same in terms of citing your works and making sure that you're keeping track of everything that you're citing or using in a research paper or research project. This is one of my favorite memes. And what I like about it is it says, can I copy your assignment? Yeah, but change it a little bit. Well, here's a perfect example of changing something, in this case, in terms of a movie poster, just a little bit. So one could argue that the second movie poster for the Avengers is maybe a little bit different from the first movie poster of Dragon Ball, but not really. Look at the poses of the characters, for example, and even some of the colors uh, and the graphics that are used. They didn't really change it all that much. I would say that that second movie poster for Avengers is definitely plagiarized from the first one from Dragon Ball. This is what we don't want you to do. And hopefully by the time you finish this tutorial, you'll have some tools that you can use to avoid plagiarizing or copying something without giving credit to an author or a work. The American Psychological Association has a pretty specific definition of what plagiarism is. And they define it as the act of presenting the words, ideas, or images of another as your own. And the problem with plagiarizing is that it denies authors or creators of content the credit that they are due. Whether deliberate or unintentional, plagiarism violates ethical standards in scholarship. And to make sure that I didn't plagiarize myself, I put in the link to the APA style site from where I took that direct quote. So in other words, think about this for a second. You work really hard when you write a paper and you work equally hard if you create a PowerPoint or Google Slides presentation, um, if you create an infographic or a website or something like that, you work very, very hard for your own creative work. And the last thing that you want is for somebody to steal parts or all of your own creative work and not give you credit for it. Basically just steal it and use it as their own. The same applies to you using other people's creative ideas or creative works without credit. <laughs> now I will tell you, I think sometimes plagiarism is unintentional because sometimes we get so busy with writing or doing research that we might fail to keep track of where we're getting our ideas or direct quotes from. And in this tutorial later on, I'm going to give you some hints for avoiding that as well. So it can be deliberate, but I think sometimes it is indeed unintentional. Nevertheless, the result is the same. It's still stealing somebody else's idea and trying to pass that off as your own. And we don't want you to fall into that trap. So we're going to look at two examples 
of is this plagiarism or not? This is a quote that I took directly from a journal article, <clears throat> and it has to do with academic procrastination, very common among university students. It says approximately every second student regularly procrastinates. Now, for the sake of this example, I'm going to say that I'm writing a research paper. And I put that quote directly into my research paper just as it stands. But notice something here. I didn't put any double quotation marks around that quote in my research paper. I basically just copied and pasted the quote. I also didn't put any type of citation within the text to lead the reader back to my original citation for this journal article. It just did. So somebody might be reading that research paper and say, oh, okay, those are Cynthia's own ideas about academic procrastination being very common among university students. Is this plagiarism or not? That one's really obvious. Yes. A direct quote or a direct quotation from any type of source has to be cited in your paper or project. So in other words, you've got to give that information on where you got that quote from. Now in APA style, we call this an in-text citation. And if you have a direct quote, what you wanna do in APA style, if you have a page number or numbers, if it's from a print book or from a journal article that maybe is a PDF that has page number or page numbers, you do include that in your citation for direct quotations. So this is the correction that I would make. If I still wanted to use that quote, but I wanted to cite it correctly in APA style, I just had to rewrite this a little bit. So I had to add the authors of the article. I put 2021 page 590 in parentheses right after the author's names, because this article, as we'll see in just a second, was published in 2021, and it came from page 590 for the quote. And the difference is I've set off that direct quotation with double quotation marks. So I made it very clear to the reader that was not my own idea. That is a direct quote directly from the authors of this journal article. And because this is from a journal article, this is the reference or citation that I would need to put at the end of my paper or project in a references list. And that indeed is the correct APA reference. So the way to think about a reference and a, um, an in-text citation is that I can be reading that in the context of a paper and I have all the information that I need to go to the references list at the end of the paper or at the end of the project and locate that reference so that I could have all the information to look up that journal article on my own. That's really a good way of thinking about how citations connect to in-text citations within a reference work. So that was very obvious. Let's do one that's not so obvious though. This is a press release from APA and the original text talks about the demand for mental health treatment and the fact that in a survey from 2022, it basically showed that demand for anxiety and depression treatment remained high for the third consecutive year, kind of after COVID. But six in 10 practitioners have reported that they no longer have openings for new patients. So basically more people are seeking mental health treatment and there are fewer practitioners around to satisfy that demand. I am paraphrasing or putting some of this information from this press release into my own words in a research paper. So that's my paraphrase. Many psychologists are reporting that requests for mental health treatment are increasing, and I cited the six out of 10 practitioners um, text there. But notice something here. I put that in my own words. But that's not my original work. I didn't do that original research, and I didn't conduct that survey in any way. But in my paraphrase, notice again, I'm not adding any type of in-text citation that would show where that information came from. I put it in my own words, but again, it's not my own idea. So when you paraphrase, is that plagiarism or not? Yes, that is still plagiarism. Now, sometimes people uh, might think, well, yeah, I realize that I got that information from an article or from a website, but I put it in my own words, I summarized it in my own words, 
So why would I have to provide an in-text citation for it? Again, keep in mind, that's not your own idea. Any ideas that you borrow, even if you're summarizing them or paraphrasing them, you've got to cite or give credit to the original source of your information. So I'm gonna show you now the APA style format for an in-text citation for a paraphrased sentence or sentences. In this case, there's my paraphrase again that I had from my previous slide, but notice the difference. At the end of this uh, paraphrase, I put in parentheses, American Psychological Association 2022. Now with a paraphrase, unlike a direct quote, a paraphrase of different ideas could come from multiple pages of a source. And because it could come from several pages, you don't necessarily have to add the page numbers unlike a direct quotation that comes from a specific page. So if you have a page number from a print or online source of information, you do have to add the page number for a direct quote. Big difference between the two. Now this was a press release. So this is the reference that needs to go again at the end of my paper or project in my references list. And in this case, when I look at that paraphrase, there's American Psychological Association, it's in parentheses for 2022, and it does state that this came from APA, but then there's the 2022, November 15th, there's the title of the press release, and there's the link. So I just took care of any questions about plagiarism or borrowing ideas without credit. So yes, that was also plagiarism. So next, I'm gonna show you some suggestions to follow as you write. So I've given you links, I'm gonna show you these about how to do an in-text citation checklist when you're writing in APA style, and also six steps to proper citation. So when you're doing an in-text citation checklist, this is a nice checklist that you can follow for each sentence in your paper that relies on another source. You can say, have you paraphrased as much as possible? If you directly quoted, is the quotation necessary? Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. For each sentence that you paraphrased, have you done more than just omit a few words and, and substitute sentence, uh, synonyms? And for each citation of a paraphrase, did you include the author in the year? And for each sentence that contains a quotation, did you incorporate it? And did you include the author year and page number? And for all in-text citations, are they matching the reference list? And are all works in your reference list actually cited in the text? Anything that's in a reference list actually has to be included in an in-text citation in your paper itself. So that's kind of a nice handy checklist to follow. And I also like this because this also from APA style from the seventh edition helps you look at six steps to proper citation. Read the work you want to cite. Identify an idea that you want to put in your paper. Write a sentence about that idea, but immediately after you write that sentence, if you haven't already done this, do the entry for the reference list. So in other words, go ahead and do the citation from that idea and put that in a working draft for a reference list. And if you do that, then you don't have to go back and think, where did I get that idea from? Or where is that source of information? Add the corresponding in-text citation to that sentence, whatever is appropriate for a direct quote or a paraphrase, and repeat as needed. This is probably one of the best um, list of steps that I can think of. Immediately after you do a paraphrase or a direct quote, include that in-text citation in your working draft of your paper and then do the reference list. I also have additional help that I wanted to show you over here. Now, many library databases, and if we go to our library's website, and if we go to the databases list that I have here, if you use databases from the library, to look up articles or books or other sources of information,
I'm just going to do a very quick search to give you an example here. And I'm just going to use this first one. Many databases, including the ones from our library, will have a handy cite feature that will let you choose your citation style, such as APA. And it makes it very easy to copy and paste that citation or that reference into your working draft or your references list and your in-text citations. Now, the key thing on this, though, is that you really need to um, proofread very carefully to make sure that a copied citation like this from a cite feature is 100% correct. This one actually is according to APA style, but sometimes citations are not always that correct. They might capitalize words that shouldn't be capitalized in APA style. So because they're not always 100% correct, always proofread your references and use your APA style help that's provided by your professor. And we can help with that as well. Another way of avoiding citation is if you're using APA style, that is to use a tool that we have free called Academic Writer. And this is totally free to, for you to use. You can set up a login if you want, and you can reach out to me if you have any questions about how to do that. But if you just want to double check how to do a reference, such as how to create a reference or how to proofread a reference for a journal article, Academic Writer is basically the APA publication manual in its seventh edition, and it's a really handy way of looking at how to do something very quickly. There are also some really handy quick guides, such as a quick guide on how to cite your references in the text, how to do direct quotations and paraphrases, how to cite secondary sources, and so forth. There are also some handy guides on fundamental writing skills, writing style, and so forth. So I'm a huge believer in using Academic Writer for the tools that it has on creating references, but then also looking at these quick guides as well as some longer tutorials, such as the basics of APA style, which is an excellent tutorial to go through when you have a little bit of time. And finally, reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, I cannot help you write your paper. But I can give you some guidance if you're struggling with how to do an in-text citation or how to create your references list in APA style. And I can also help you get started with research. I can be reached at ckane one at emporia.edu. You can also call me or leave me a voicemail at 620-341-5480. And I'd be more than happy to work with you in person or through a Zoom appointment and just work through any questions that you might have about avoiding plagiarism. You can also reach the library's reference desk. The address for the library's webpage is emporia.edu slash library. You can chat with us or Zoom with us live when we're available at the library's webpage. You can also email a question to libref01 at emporia.edu or call the desk at 620-341-5207. To summarize, Plagiarism can be avoided with some quick and careful steps and paying attention as you go along. The last thing you want to do is use somebody else's ideas or works, not give them credit in your paper or project, and then wind up plagiarizing without even knowing it. So reach out if you have any questions at all. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial and good luck.